Please come this way. Thank you very much. So, Joy Reid, back out here running her mouth again. Um, she has a response to Senator Tommy Tuberville's statements saying that American citizens should have more kids. At the exact same time, saying that more illegal aliens need to be deported. Now, low IQ Joy Reid um, simply just goes on a stupid rant about things that don't really mean anything. She pulls the race card out a few times, race baiting people, things that have nothing to do with, because Tommy Tupperville's statements never mentioned race once. It basically just said United States citizens should have more kids because of low birth rates. Joy Reid doesn't agree with that. Joy Reid believes that you, American citizens, shouldn't have any more kids and you should be okay with being replaced by illegal aliens. Before we get into the video, I need to tell you a secret. I need you to hit the like and the subscribe button. I need to fight against the YouTube algorithm. Because I'm on the road to 1,000. I'm going to need all the help I can get. Let's get into it. The United States has a population of north of 327 million people. Why do we need more kids? I mean, your party, Senator Tuberville, is the one screaming that 10 million immigrants, which... I don't even know that that number even makes any sense because it doesn't um, have streamed into the country since Joe Biden has been president. And you're claiming that that's too many people, that if more people come into the southern border, this is some sort of crisis because we, we've got too many people and we've got no more space and we can't afford more people. But now you're saying we need more kids. Can you explain who's the we and what's the purpose? You're also a senator from the state of Alabama. God help the people there. Are you saying the state of Alabama needs more kids? Why does the state of Alabama need more kids? More kids for what? There was a time when the state of Alabama absolutely needed more kids because, you know, Alabama was a slave state. And the mandate of the planter class in Alabama was for black women to produce more kids because those kids were property and they could work more kids and make more money on their plantations. Are you saying the state of Alabama needs more kids because you think that those populations will include people who are maybe destitute and desperate enough if you kick out the immigrants like a lot of y'all want to do and you could make them do the work that the migrants are doing now? Because that kind of sounds slavery-ish. Is the state of Alabama the we? And is, is, is that the why? I mean, you're also a white guy. Are you saying the we is white folks need more kids? Is this like a great replacement thing where you're concerned that there's not enough white people in the population versus the growth of the Latino population, the black population, the Asian American population? And so the we is white people need to make white women have more kids and that's the we and that's the why because it's a little creepy. A little Handmaid's Tale, don't you think? So first, she basically states uh, the population in the United States is extremely large. Why would we need more kids? But I'm pretty sure she would be okay with illegal aliens having more kids. Then goes on to say, uh, yeah, you said 10 million you know, immigrants come across the border. Um, uh, that don't, number don't make sense. Yeah, you're right. It doesn't make sense. It's probably way more. It's probably a whole hell of a lot more. And she goes, well, you know, you said, uh, you know, we don't need all these people. We don't have the resources to pay for all these people coming in. Yeah, because they cost us money that they're not paying into the system. And yeah, we need more kids to replace the people that's already here. Because from your perspective, what you're saying is it's okay to replace American citizens with illegal aliens. That's literally what you're saying without saying replacement. Exactly what you're advocating for. And then almost insinuates, you know, what's the we, what's the purpose? Saying, well, the we is Americans, right? Like, why, does it, why is there race or anything, you know, being even insinuated at some point in time? And then she goes on to say, like, why does Alabama need more kids? Uh, well, Alabama needs more kids just like every other state needs more kids because we're at a, a point of lower birth rates. Is she too dumb to realize that, you know, by year 2100, it's possible that, you know, we're not going to have enough people to even 
sustain, you know, our natural course of, you know, civility, our own social status is going to be, you know, so deprived of human beings. I mean, it's happening all over the world. I mean, you, you keep bringing more and more people from another country. That's never going to fix birth rates if you don't fix the actual rate of birth. Because you're just going to have a bunch of people who also aren't having any kids. And I don't even understand why she keeps bringing up like, you know, Alabama was a slave state. Well, there was a lot of slave states and non-slave states. They have lower birth rates. They need to have more American citizens having babies. You can't expect just to keep bringing people in from other countries to keep replacing American citizens. Because that's what you're advocating for. At the end of the day, you want American citizens to be replaced because you're too dumb to realize. So you have this mindset of like, oh no, I absolutely am going to replace an American citizen. Because don't you think about like when, when Senator Tommy Tuberville talks about more people having kids, doesn't he think, don't you think that he means more black kids too? Don't you think he means more black Americans are going to have kids too? You're advocating for less black Americans to have kids? Well, I mean, you probably are because you're good with, you know, pro-choice for women. I mean, that's the biggest, you know, signifier of eugenics is abortion. And, and then she brings up like, well, you don't, you know, what do you want to kick out the migrants and make the, make the Americans do the slaverish work? See how she calls it slaverish work. So what do you want? Do you want the illegal migrants to come in and do the slave work? Is that what you're saying? Is that what you're advocating for? Because the work has to be done one way or another, right? So, you know, do you plan on bringing in illegal aliens, criminals, to come do what you call, what you call slave work? Or is it that just they're just jobs that can be filled by American citizens? Because the more people you have in a country or in a system, the less negotiating power you have towards wages. That's the problem, Joy. That's why you're low IQ. That's where you're a dumbass. And then she has to bring up like, well, you're a white guy. Yeah, he's a white guy. But don't you think he's he's advocating for black people to have kids too? To You know, they're Americans. Did he come out and say, I only want white babies? Is that what he said? If he said that, okay. I would agree that that's wrong. But him saying that, that Americans themselves need to have more kids, that's not wrong. That's the right thing to do. That's a pro-American move. I don't think Joy Reid's a pro-American. And this great replacement theme that she says, she's the one who's stating it. She's stating the great replacement theme that she, she brings up so nonchalantly as if that's not occurring. Of course it's occurring. You literally are just advocating it for right now, right this moment. You are advocating for the great replacement without using the words great replacement. And then have the nerve to say, you know, well, you're just saying to white people. Uh, well, no, he didn't just say that. Because he's saying, well, you, you, it feels like you're leaving it to black people. He's not. He never said that. Not once. Not once did he say, you know, black Americans shouldn't have kids. Only white Americans. And then and then accuses, well, it's little hands -maidsy. So what if a woman chooses to stay home and be a housewife and have kids? Are you accusing her to be too hands -maidsy? I mean, how many women are you putting down right now that choose to stay home and have children and build a nuclear family? You see, this is where where Joy Reid is is clearly too stupid to talk. MSNBC should have got rid of her years ago. She is an idiot, a moron. She knows nothing about nothing. And the fact is, she doesn't even realize that it's not just the money that that's costing us. It's the crime as well. I mean, for years, uh, John Kemp from uh, Georgia, the, the, the governor, has been asking for information, especially about this Lincoln Riley case. We have the we have the clip through Fox News, but she was basically, uh, you know, murdered by an illegal alien, but can't get any information because the Biden administration keeps holding back uh, all the information that would tell us who this person really is. An illegal immigrant has been charged with the murder of 22-year-old Georgia nursing student, Lakin Riley. Georgia Governor Brian Kemp now demanding answers from the Biden administration on the killer's immigration status, writing, quote, 
These tragedies are not unique to Georgia. Federal action to secure the border is the only way to holistically address this ongoing crisis and ensure Lake and Riley's horrible fate is not replicated across the country. Governor Kemp joins us now this morning on Fox Friends. Governor Kemp, thanks for being with us this morning. Um, we, of course, want to get your thoughts on this on this horrific crime. I also um, don't want to presume, but I think it's probably reasonable you have some information that not all of us would have access to. I'm just curious, have you at this point um, heard what could have been this killer's motive? It, it does seem, it's been described as a crime of opportunity, but it also does seem somewhat random on the campus of the University of Georgia. What, what was, to your knowledge, driving this criminal? Well, first of all, I just want to offer my condolences, thoughts, and prayers to Lakin's family. I talked to his parents, John and Allison, last night. As you can imagine, they are just struck with grief. They're heartbroken, and they're also, like I am, they're upset, and they're mad and, and outraged at this incident that happened. You know, I don't really know too much about the criminal investigation. I'm letting the, the locals handle that. We put a lot of resources with the Georgia Bureau of Investigation to be able to help them do that. Uh, from everything we know, this was just a, a random, you know, happening uh, at this this point in time. Uh, don't believe it was targeted, but you know, I don't. I'm not positive on that. I think we need to let the investigation continue. I mean, the good thing is local law enforcement working with state resources got this guy off the street and got him locked up uh, and now we just got to search for answers and that's the thing that's so frustrating about this guys is this is what we've been asking for and this is what we've been talking about for over two years now uh, in a recent September letter that the Republican governors wrote to the president and the administration you know who are these people where are you sending them and we have yet to receive that information and now something like this happens has anyone from the administration reached out to you uh, not to my knowledge, I haven't heard uh, anything, especially since we sent the letter. So you see that, right? Uh, this Georgia nursing student was, was killed by an illegal immigrant. The reason I don't want to give up the information is because once you put, start putting the information across the country together, you start to see it's a larger problem. You know, one incident here or there, you know, it's a coincidence. Uh, e even a hundred cases could be a coincidence because it's a large population. I mean, way too many illegal aliens. But there's thousands upon thousands upon thousands of illegal uh, immigrants coming in here and criminalizing. We, we, I've done stories where they attacked the police or they started ripping up people's flags. And it, it's again, it's not just Hispanic. It's not just like, uh, you know, people from Mexico or South America. It's all over the world. They literally, they're, they're diametrically opposed to our culture. So when people start saying, no, they're just immigrants. That's disingenuous. No, they are either running from their country because they were criminals there, or they're ordered from some higher power from that country to come in and disrupt or suck out resources, or they're just doing it out of greed. Because my argument is, if you're running from your country because of political you know, turmoil, um, your country's that bad, you're so scared to stay. Maybe we need to start invading those countries. Maybe we need to arm you and get, and travel you back to your country so you can wage war against that, that horrible, horrible country of yours and, and have your own revolution and Independence Day so we can ship all your people back to that country so they're safe again. Isn't that good? Isn't that what you want? Don't you want to make your home country safe again? Because you came here, you know, under refugee status seeking asylum you were so scared so let's let's invade that country on your behalf uh give your reins of power and uh you can run your country again you and your people and and all your people that are here can finally leave the united states of america and go back home isn't that what you want and see the biden administration is worse to worse i mean no administration has been great i mean donald trump did a little bit better than most people um and truthfully, Obama uh, deported, he was, he was the deporter in chief. So he even kind of understood, right? Because if he didn't, he, you know, that would have disrupted wages if there was a, a wide open border. But there's so many people that we don't know who they are. Uh, Riley Lankin is just, you know, one of many victims. Uh, and, and then you'll have the disingenuous people saying, again, you'll have the Democratic progressives saying, oh no. 
uh, migrants who cross the border illegally, they do less criminal activities than, than natural born citizens here. Even if that was true, point one, they started off on the wrong foot by committing a crime to be here in the first place. Secondly, any crime added to the already, you know, natural crime that we have from citizens is just more crime. If they weren't here in the first place, they wouldn't be here to be able to commit crimes, now would they? We'd have a lot less crime overall. You're just adding more crime to the system by allowing people who are criminals to come in in the first place. If you ever get in an argument with a progressive or a liberal and they start saying that, say if, ask them the simple question is if, if these illegal criminals, if these criminals didn't invade us and they, these illegal aliens weren't here, would there be more crime or less crime? There would be less crime. Overall, there would be less crime. There, there, you can't argue with that because there's just more people to commit crimes in the first place. They are untrustworthy. We can't trust them with the border. We can't trust them with power. Um, you know, there's sanctuary for everybody unless you're an American. Then there's no sanctuary for you at all. And then AOC. AOC has to chime in. She gets on MSNBC, you know, the, the, the progressive network of, uh, you know, GE, which they aren't really progressive. They're just corporate. They're, it's all about the money with them. They're, they're about as corrupt as corrupt can be. Um, so let's see what, you know, nonsense she has to say, you know, run out of her mouth. We'll come back after the clip. The idea that Republicans, in order to win an election, say we need to hermetically seal the border when they know that that would be, that is economic self-sabotage to the U.S. economy. And they are saying, let's, let's do it anyway. And to compensate for the negative effects, we're going to allow and throw people's kids into factories. That is what they are doing in rolling back child labor laws while being as xenophobic and anti-immigrant as, as they are. And while ginning up this this false narrative about this being a crisis and by the way by then also preventing and blocking any legislation yeah. that would provide not just a path to citizenship but a path to work papers a path to allowing people who want to work to be paired with american businesses who need people to work and it, I mean, there's, there is not only no moral calculation, there is no economic calculation, there is no logical calculation, there is only a political calculation. And that political calculation is we are going to keep whining about it, mm -hmm. we are going to keep pretending this is a crisis while contributing to actual problems, and then we're going to block the solution so that we can campaign on it over and over and over, and we can call it caravans, we can call it migrant crises, we can call it family separation, and they will just recycle it over and over and over again in order to gin up, you know, just so much animosity and destruction in this country and racism in this country, because that's the only thing that the Republican Party even is standing on at this point. So you hear her say, like, you know, to begin with, she was like, we, your Republicans want to seal off the border and that would be economic self-sabotage. So are you telling me we weren't economically, you know, prosperous when we had a closed border? When we had less immigrants? Did we do financially better or worse? Was there higher inflation or lower inflation? Uh, was food cost higher or lower? Was housing cost higher or lower? So how, you know, where are you getting your economic, you know, where are you getting your math at, dumb dumb? You're a dummy. I don't even know why you're speaking about economics because you can't even do simple math. It's logical, you dumbass. And then she goes, uh, makes the claim, well, they just want to throw kids back into factories, which they did roll, people did, don't blame them just Republicans. The Democrats did roll back child labor laws too, which is, which, you know, has its own, questions and merits but then she she attributes anti-immigration illegal immigration and xenophobia as if they're the same thing they're not the same thing xenophobia is is more about race base being anti-illegal immigrant is more nationalist it really has no bearing on somebody's race 
I, I'm going to take a guess if if there was mass immigration from people from Germany, Spain, Eastern Europe, uh, England, Norway, all these white countries, and they were coming in and they were committing crimes and sucking up our resources and taking our jobs and hurting our wages, that Republicans would be against that just as much as that from any brown or black country. And then she says they're trying to block uh, PAP to citizenship and papers and pairing up with businesses that need people to work. Yeah, that's the problem. That's not a good thing. A PAP to citizenship? Why are we giving people PAP to citizenship? You broke into our country. You invaded us. You're a negative. You're bad. You're not a good person. You should be arrested and thrown in jail and deported. You are shouldn't even be here. You're talking to me and talking to everybody else like that's a good thing? Papers. The only papers you should get is, is your walking papers. You should be shipped on a bus and thrown back to whatever goddamn country you came from. And then the pair up with the businesses. So you're, so you're basically advocating have these jobs taken away from American citizens. So now, now you're creating such a, no competition. There's zero competition in the job market. Now you're, you're basically advocating for people who don't belong here, who are criminals in the first place, who come in here and suck our resources up with $10,000 debit cards, and now you're, you're good with them pairing up with American businesses to take our jobs? You're a traitor. You shouldn't even be in office. Nobody should ever trust you, AOC. You ain't A-OK, -okay, dumbass. And she says it's, you know, there's a moral moral obligation or economic logical sense or any of this. And all you're doing is complaining and blocking the solution. It's not the solution. That's not the solution. The solution is to give everybody our shit, our jobs. They, you are literally advocating for the, us to be replaced as American citizens. You're not an American. Nobody should ever think that you're an American politician. You're a traitor. You sold us out. You were literally openly advocating for, for the worst policies ever to basically take away from the American people. No American should ever vote for you, ever. You were horrible. You're a horrible human being, horrible person. I mean, AOC is probably one of the worst human beings I've ever seen in my entire life. So she comes across as so meek, so pretty, but the things she's advocating for, she accuses everybody else for wanting destruction. No, you're, you're literally saying to everybody all around the world, come on in, we'll give you whatever you want. Take the jobs from American people. You know, we're going to give you all the housing, all the money, all the care in the world. We'll take care of you. But where were you taking care of American people? They're American citizens. They needed your help. You didn't help them at all. I just seen another clip today where it's like, oh, American citizens, you have problem paying your, your, your light bill? Oh, why don't you just, why don't you apply? Go get in this application program. Uh, it's called Lie Heap. Well, it's a heap of lies to go get, you know, a little bit of help on your, your gas and electric. But if you're illegally came here, if you're a criminal, if you invaded the United States of America, you get $10,000. That's the kind of person AOC is. She's trash. AOC is a trash can human. And if you don't believe me, that they are willing to spend hundreds of millions of dollars to protect people who came here illegally, criminals. Let's check out this clip from Boston on the amenities and all the, the, the special ways they go out of their ways to house and feed and take care of criminals. Homeless and migrants living in hotels and motels. So just how much money is the state paying for lodging? Records obtained by the I-Team show the state has 17 contracts for housing, totaling more than $116 million. Those contracts are only for fiscal year 2024 and end in June. Yeah, this is something that we have been asking the administration for information on for better part of a year and uh, have, have been stonewalled on the information. So I think... Um, for you to get it, I think it's it's um, it's really important. In some cases, the hotels are collecting money from the state for three meals a day, sixteen dollars for breakfast, seventeen dollars for lunch, and thirty-one dollars for dinner. That means sixty-four dollars a day per person. 
The state's right to shelter law requires it provide families with refrigeration and basic cooking facilities. But some of the accommodations do not have those appliances, leaving the state to contract out for food and delivery. Citing the emergency nature of the crisis, the state gave Spinelli Ravioli Manufacturing Company in East Boston a $10 million six-month no-bid contract to provide meals and delivery services. Spinelli's tells the I-Team, as an approved state vendor, we have the ability to deliver emergency meals and mobilize quick... So as you see in that clip, um, these programs for 17 different contracts for housing for illegal criminals who invaded us, um, upwards of $116 million. It, it, it was just for six months. Is there any programs for $116 million to house you, American citizens, in these cities? No, there's not. They've literally taken your tax dollars to give to criminals to house them. For what purpose? They're literally using us as piggy banks. And the crazy part is that these hotels are collecting like over $60 a day on the behalf of these these individuals a per person to feed them $64 a day uh, th there's no way that it should cost that much to feed a person not when you're you're, you're for one you're feeding them on mass let alone two you shouldn't be feeding them at all is anybody feeding you I mean they got issues look how many years have been people just saying you know look for handouts uh, American citizens going to food banks they want to close food banks for American citizens but yet there's there's these massive contracts and all this money spent on you know 60 some dollars a day per person on on meals three square meals a day it's crazy they won't even give us you know they have a problem with giving us food stamps where it's only like 750 seven dollars and fifty cents a day per person every American citizen in the United States should be getting food stamps right at this moment I'm not even a socialist, but it's it's hard to watch, you know, people who are criminals, who don't belong here, who aren't citizens, getting more than the American citizen. We're struggling. It, it's so hard. Every day, it's just, you can't even pay rent. And then, then you know, you, you keep hearing these stories about how everybody else is getting something that, that, that legitimately doesn't belong to them. They take your tax dollars to give to them. Your hard-earned money, you break your damn back every single day. For what? What are we doing it for? Nothing. We're doing it for nothing. And then a right to shelter law in, in Boston as well. I mean, I'm pretty sure the other places have that, that, you know, refrigeration and microwaves and, and a right to shelter. Right to shelter? What about the homeless people already here? How many tens of thousands of, hundreds of thousands of people are homeless in America? You don't have a right to shelter those people, but you have a right to shelter, you know, people who invaded us? It's crazy. Somebody needs to ask questions. You know, I've seen, like, Eric Adams gave out a no-bid contract in New York. Well, this is Boston. They gave it a $10 million Spinelli, uh, no-bid contract to a place called Spinelli's. Does anybody who gives out these contracts, are they friends with somebody from Spinelli's? Did anybody ask questions? Did anybody shop around? So you just spent $10 million dollars for six months worth of meals and deliver them, that seems like a lot of money. You're telling me it takes $10 million to feed these individuals for six months? That's crazy. That's you, So you're telling me that's one-tenth of what it took to shelter these people. You're telling me it takes 10% of what it takes to shelter them to feed them? That seems like a little high to me. And plus it was no bid at that. Who made the decision? Did you throw a dart at a board? And said, oh, Spinelli's, Spinelli's won. Or was it somebody who knew somebody? But you're just, fr everybody's supposed to be afraid to ask these questions. Because you do, you're called a racist, a bigot, a xenophobe. Just ask AOC. And I don't even care that they're an approved state vendor or something that, of that nature. It does, None of that matters. Um, we keep seeing it over and over and over again. How your tax dollars, and we're just being opposed on by so many people for so many years, it, it's eventually going to snap. Um, and then they, they then they laugh at you and scoff at you. They, you know, it's this pedantic smile that they do. This little, huh, uh, don't, oh, you use the words replacement. Even though they they're taking steps day by day to replace you. I mean, in one breath, uh, we've seen earlier in the, the clips, 
Joy Reid saying, oh, what are you talking about, replacement theory? And then in the next breath, she talks about people literally being replaced at their jobs. So did AOC, talking about getting replaced, you know, a path of citizenship. To work with these businesses to take these jobs that so-called Americans don't want. Is there jobs Americans don't want? Probably. Should we give it to people who invade our country? Absolutely not. I find these people criminal and disingenuous, uh, corrupt, and, and it feels like there's an underlying plan. I hate being a conspiracy theorist, but you keep seeing it. All these, these crazy things that people say that, that are going on behind the scenes turn out to be true. So do I know what the answer is? I do not. I, all I can do is report this and, and you see this and hopefully you can uh, you hit the subscribe button, give me a like, share, leave a comment. Hopefully we can build a big enough community to keep asking questions. Uh, I, I'm trying to get large enough where I can start asking bigger people a lot bigger questions. Um, I'd really like to get to a point where, you know, I, I question some of the people in power. I'm working towards it. I'm small now, guys. I need your help. I really do. So, Ken, it, again, if you enjoy this content, if you uh, enjoy me asking questions and how I, I, I present this to you, hit the like and the subscribe button. Um, hopefully, I can get monetized and I can start working on a little bit bigger stories. Um, but until then, I'll see you guys in the next one. I'm Simple Son. Peace.